This is the Terramaster D5 Hybrid. It's a DAS direct attached storage device with two three and a half inch hard drive bays and three M.2 NVMe slots. It's got 10 gigabit per second USB 3 type C output. So a maximum potential speed of mathematically 1,250 megabytes per second. Real world, I don't know how or why, it's not really the point, but you'll get less than that. Terramaster is saying 980 megabytes per second. But I'm not interested in this drive for the top speed of the NVMe slots. Some people may ask why it even exists. The speed of NVMe's are way faster than the speed of the USB 3 10 gigabit per second connection. So what's the point? And you might be right. You're even more right when you consider my MacBook Pro here, the 2015 model with USB 3 5 gigabit per second ports. It doesn't make sense. But that's not why I'm doing this. I'm interested in these bad boys. Yes, old school, slow as a snail, spitting hard drives. I had some WD Red NAS drives from a now defunct Drobo coming to an eBay near you soon. And I was interested in the other neat feature of this enclosure, which was hardware RAID. And it works. It does RAID 0, RAID 1, JMOD, all sort of seamlessly. I say sort of. I found AFPS to be a little more reliable for mounting on my Mac when I used XFAT. Sometimes the drive didn't show up as mountable. It showed up in disk utility, but I couldn't mount it. Anyways, I discovered that Mac has RAID Assistant built in, and it got me to wondering, which is quicker? Quick, you ask? Well, who cares with these old spinny things? Why are you even using them? Well, like I said, I had them. And RAID 0 offers potentially twice the speed. I don't care about redundancy on these drives particularly, so let's see which is quicker. Twice the speed of a WD Red is potentially 360 megabytes per second. Now that's not quick by any stretch, but it is approaching old SATA SSD speeds, which were around 450 megabytes per second. And we all know they felt like a rocket ship in comparison when they first came out. I say we all know, I'm old. I'm actually old enough to know floppy disks, the big kind, and loading games from a tape drive. So in the computer world, I'm ancient. So let's see how close we can get to this maximum. My guess, not very. First, the baseline showing both drives individually. Both read and write speeds of 140 to 150 megabytes per second compared to the quoted maximum from Western Digital of 180 megabytes per second. One drive looking like it's not quite as healthy as the other one there, but as I say, these are quite old. Approximately 80% of the quoted maximum. So hopefully, with the two drives combined in RAID 0, we can be looking at approximately 290 megabytes per second. Now taking a look at the built-in RAID, I ran the Blackmagic disk speed test at least three times, sometimes five times, to get an average. Speeds of approximately 280 megabytes per second. That's quite a bit faster. Not quite the 290, but pretty close, 97%-ish, so I'm happy with that. Now let's compare it to the Mac RAID Assist. Can it get that last 3% out? And the results? Identical. One or two megabytes per second here or there, but that's basically the same. So which to use? That's a whole debate in itself. I'll be using these for backups and potentially moving from computer to computer, so I'm going for the hardware option myself. Hope this was interesting. I'm sure it'd be much more impressive with SSDs in RAID and Thunderbolt connections, but I don't have that option at the moment. Let me know if you want me to do any more tests. Thank you and good night.